Video on the iPhone is getting a big upgrade with the introduction of log footage on the iPhone 15 Pro. Log shooting, combined with the ability to record in ProRes at 4K 60fps, will bring way more flexibility to editing footage shot on the iPhone. Here's how. Before diving into log footage, I wanted to address the benefits of ProRes. First off, when shooting ProRes footage, you shoot at a much higher bitrate, so it captures a lot more data. With 4K 30fps footage, the iPhone 14 would use 6 gigabytes of storage for every minute of video, while the H.265 video the iPhone normally captures would take up only 190 megabytes for that same minute of 4K 30fps video. H.265 is incredibly efficient, but it is going to lose more detail than ProRes. H.265 uses two different types of compression, inter-frame compression and intra-frame compression. The intra-frame compression will take a frame of video and then blocks of pixels within that frame and simplify them, essentially grouping together blocks of pixels if the colors are similar enough. That helps reduce the amount of storage needed. But in most footage, there aren't that many changes from one frame to the very next. As I stand here, the background behind me is staying the same in almost every frame of the video. So H.265 also uses inter-frame compression. So it takes the frame of video, and rather than immediately offering a whole new image, 24, 30, or 60 times a second, it basically says to take this cluster of pixels and move it this way for the next frame. You can do this several frames in a row, moving pixels this way or that, and saying add new pixels here to dramatically reduce the amount of data needed to capture convincing video. But eventually, enough has changed that you need a whole new picture to work off of, so you get another frame that's a full picture, or a keyframe. Then it completes that over again, moving clusters of pixels in each frame and eventually providing another full picture. ProRes isn't a totally uncompressed video stream. Those would have even more massive files. But it is a lot closer to it. Rather than making use of both inter-frame and intra-frame compression, it only uses that intra-frame compression. So each and every frame of video is its own full picture. Because each frame in ProRes is saved as its own picture, the editing can actually be smoother when you scrub to a new spot in the video, rather than having your computer have to go back to the previous keyframe, then calculate all the changes up to that point, your computer just has to display the currently selected image. With the iPhone 15 Pro, you can now record ProRes video at up to 4K 60fps. This is an improvement over the 14 Pro's 4K 30fps maximum, but in my opinion, the big improvement this generation is the introduction of log video. While ProRes and H.265 are essentially the way that the pictures are stored and don't really affect the colors of your video, Log completely changes how your video looks. You basically have 10 bits of data each for red, green, and blue that are used to define the color you should be looking at. With most footage, the color is saved as you would expect it to appear on the final screen. You have vibrant, saturated colors, shadows and blacks that are really dark, and highlights that are really bright. When you record in log mode, your camera is able to take the same 10 bits of color information, but offer a much wider dynamic range, or difference between the darkest and brightest detail that can be recorded. It essentially uses a logarithmic curve, hence the name, to compress those colors into a smaller part of the 10 bits of data. Then you have extra bits to define the even brighter colors that would have just appeared white with normal footage. So if I were recording in front of a bright window or there were dark shadows, you would be able to see a lot more detail in there. But when you actually shoot log footage, it will look something like this. Obviously, this isn't how you wanna release your footage. So you can use LUTs, which define what these altered colors should actually look like on the screen. When you're working with log footage, you have a lot more flexibility to adjust your look in post. If you overexposed it a bit, you can bring it down in brightness, or vice versa if you underexposed. 
It's also easier to grade footage from different types of cameras so that the colors match properly. While you can try to correct overexposed or underexposed footage that wasn't shot in log, you're far more likely to have clipping because the video was recorded how you would want the viewer to watch it, but with a lower dynamic range as a result. Now, you definitely don't need to shoot log footage all the time. Normally, when I'm shooting A-roll in front of the camera, I don't bother. I have pretty controlled lighting, and I don't have dramatic dark and light spots, so shooting in Rec. 709 works well enough, and I can save a bit of extra time while I'm editing. When I'm shooting rocket launches, though, I'm trying to get the most dynamic range possible, so I can see the detail in the flame of an engine while also keeping the detail of the dramatically darker surroundings. If I tried to shoot this in Rec. 709, it would look something more like this. But if I take log footage and grade it, then I can get the look that I'm going for. With this generation of iPhone, there are two more great additions for cinematographers. For one, with support for the Academy color encoding system, it will make shooting in log and then grading to match other cameras much simpler. It's an industry standard for color management. I mentioned earlier the massive data rate you already get with 4K 30 ProRes footage on the iPhone 14. The iPhone 15 Pro can do 4K 60, so you might be worried that you have to go with the 512 gig or one terabyte option in order to get the most recording time. But instead, thanks to Apple finally adopting USB-C, you can just plug an SSD directly into your phone and then record the video directly to that drive. I definitely wasn't expecting that upgrade, but I'm so glad to see it. It'll make the workflow for iPhone video shooters so much more straightforward. So there we have it. I definitely oversimplified a lot of this, because once you really start looking at different color spaces and gammas, it can get really complicated, and I didn't even want to touch Dolby Vision or other dynamic metadata HDR formats. So hopefully I kept this clear, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Recording log footage on the iPhone will absolutely be a niche feature. Most people have no need to even record at the higher data rates of ProRes, let alone capture the flat looking image that will require more work in post that Log provides. But there's already been an audience looking for these features through third party apps, so I'm glad to see these camera improvements coming to the iPhone this time around. Paired with the addition of the 5X camera on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I'm really looking forward to giving these new features a go. If this video helped you out, consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel for more from 9to5Mac.